Hello, friends and lovers, and welcome to my second long-form episode in this um, independent artist living, existing series. So today we're going to begin on a, a Thursday, well, sorry, it's actually a Wednesday. <laughs> this is a, a document of the day of the life of my Wednesday, March 6th. Um, and um, as you'll see, we're, you know, we're going to calmly and sweetly bring ourselves um, into this sort of gentle vibes of being an independent artist because all it is is gentle vibes. Um, some mornings I wake up and I do my reading and my journaling and other mornings I actually do not because I don't have time because it's going to be a really busy day. So this is my daily um, move around of the apartment because I have to do that. Um, moving the apartment around um, if I'm going to uh, do my workout, which I also don't do every single day of the week. Most weekdays though, I tend to do a workout. Um, most days I also am a little bit, uh, I don't know if panicked is the right word, but I would say OCD. Um, I think that cleaning is doing a few things for me these days. First of all, it allows me to not focus on my art. <laughs> it allows me to focus on something else with a tangible response. Okay, once that's done, and by tangible response, I mean I can get something done that has immediate results, and the results are that the apartment is clean. So um, once that is done, though, I can start my rollout for um, my workout of the day. Now I use this app. It's called Better Me. I, I, I'm not really here to review this app. I don't know if it's a good app or not. You're supposed to put goals. You're supposed to log your calories. I cannot bear to log my calories. That's not something I'll be doing. But I do follow their formula of um, having a glass of lemon water in the morning is good for your digestion. Now I am not, I'm not here to certify <laughs> any of that and I'm also not here to show you the workout because showing you the workout um isn't possible because it's on my uh my app on my phone which is what I use to record everything and moreover um it's not uh, very important to me to show you a workout I think the other things in life are what is important to me in addition to um this workout that I do in the mornings I think literally here I'm, I'm doing my skincare routine now, I don't know about the skincare routine. Like, is that something that I should be paying attention to? Like, is this, does it matter is my question. And as a performance artist where people look at my face, I, does this stuff matter more? Do I need to be paying more attention and more care into the self-care of my face? Um, these are the serious questions. These are the questions that uh, I think about a lot. And quite frankly, I, working out is really good for my mental health. But I also do it because I'm constantly in a body dysmorphic uh, panic. Um, and maybe panic's the wrong word. Maybe the word I'm looking for is an insecure self-doubt uh, body dysmorphic um, concern of how I look to other people. If I look um, like I deserve to be seen by other people, it runs pretty deep. And I recognize that that's not a very feminist, you know, I, I'm brainwashed even though I don't want to be, I guess is what I'm saying. Because of course I'm brainwashed even though I don't want to be because I'm a femme person in the modern world and I like you know look at, at successful femmes for the most part are extremely skinny and beautiful and all of these things that uh my brain is like psyched out to think that I'm not those things even if I look at myself sometimes I look I feel like I look like I'm those things and then other times I really really don't and it's um it's not something I'm proud of admitting and it feels very again it feels very unfeminist of me to say that because I certainly don't look at other people that way but to claim that I am all confidence and then I don't suffer from these things. Well, that would be just a bold, bold-faced lie. But let's get back into the truth of the non-lies. The truth of the non-lie, I suppose, is that, do I mean what I say? Um, is that uh, we love the clean. So putting away the dishes after you've done your workout. After I do my workout is when I kind of set my apartment back up, my room, my little studio of a room to uh, have a, a good day and the clean space and starting my day out like I'm the kind of person who will throw the tutu and whatever the fit was on the couch the night of and then in the morning is when um, after my workout I put everything back together and then the space feels like it's a good space like a good space to get the work done and that's even you know like often after I have my I do reading and I write in my journal and do these things that um, make me feel uh, 
like I'm somewhat collected. I think I often read in the morning because I'm too uncollected to read at night, which you'll see. Tonight was one of those uncollected nights, um, which you will get to see. Um, and when you're running things yourself for your business as an artist, um, you know, the schedule really is up to you and how you want to enrich your creativity and be productive and try to make some money while you're doing all of that. So that brings me to my makeup routine. And, and I'll also let you know, I usually am listening to a podcast during all of this. I'm listening to the news. I'm becoming, uh, just using this time to fill myself after um, my morning routine, part of my morning routine is to just get the news and get all those things in and done. I do not read the news right now. I don't, not at this point in my life. I listen to it. I listen to a variety of different podcasts for my news intake um, because I sort of just devote my reading time to specifically books when I am able to do that, which is, um, you know, not as often. <laughs> as I would like. The makeup part of my life is, like I've said, a big part of my life. It's funny, in this particular um, episode here on YouTube, I'm not wearing makeup on my face um, today because I am going to um, the Vegan Run Club at 7 p.m. to go for a little run. And so I'm not doing, uh, I'm not wearing any makeup in this immediate moment, but most days every day I do put on, uh, I guess some would call this a lot of makeup. I, at this point, because I do it so much, I don't feel like it's a lot of makeup, but it is like a look. And part of the look feels like it's my brand. It feels like it's something, you know, getting dressed and putting on makeup for your day, even if you don't have anywhere to go. I think I've talked about this. I'll, I'll talk about this a lot <laughs> in my life. Um, it really helps me feel like prepared. Like, I don't know, like I'm doing I'm, I'm showing up for myself in this way. I'm kind of getting dressed, you know, and I, and, and if someone were to knock at my door to be like, Siobhan, it's time to go, then I will be ready to go to whatever thing that is, especially if it's a big thing that is so important for me to be at. So speaking of importance, I'm finally sitting here at this humble desk space of mine and, uh. I'm doing the work. So you often start your day, everybody, am I right, with these calendars, looking at your life, what are, what, what's going, what's, what's going on for the day? What are the appointments and the meetings and all the shit that's getting scheduled, which is um, a lot. Answering some emails. I'm, my inboxes both feel like they often really get away from me. <laughs> like my inboxes are not my strong suit. Um, even though uh, I fire away a lot of emails, it's a matter of like setting things up and scheduling things and being on the target of my day in my life I uh I don't feel it, it's a it's a big thing it's a daily thing I mean, and and emails you know I will say some days I have to-do list days and other days I have email days and when some emails are coming in you're like this is important I really got to deal with it that's like something that I I make sure to prioritize but today actually for the most part was not an email day it was in fact a to-do list day and uh, to-do lists are a big part of my creative practice. And by to-do list, I mean a literal notebook with handwriting on it that I can scratch lines out with a pen, which feels very satisfying to me, unlike all of the aspects of our email. So um, one of the things on my to-do list, I was behind. I wanted to get it written and even maybe perhaps published the day before. But I, um, I wrote and published the whole thing uh, yesterday. So this is my Patreon post that I'm working on. And you'll see that what I'm actually doing here is going through photos. Now, I have a goal this year of being a person whose photos are really, really organized. I'm going to pay for a new photo holding system program. I do not know what that's going to be or what that's going to look like. But I, I want to do it because um, I do not like the way that I handle my photos right now, which is that it's a very disorganized, um, chaotic space. And I have a lot of sorting out to do. But um, what I'm writing about um, this week on my public blog post on Patreon is, in fact, my, um, my February event, which was um, my, my second annual Love Month mailing. And what I did was I set people up to... Uh, send letters or postcards or packages or gifts of other kinds to each other in the mail. And it was a huge joy and labor of love for me. I got 50 people across 19 different states and three different countries to send things to each other. And they sign up and they fill out a form. And 
it's very, very joyful. And some of them sent me images, which is great, very helpful for me. And I didn't save them in a folder. I didn't put them in anywhere particular. I just saved them to my phone. So it's in that, you know, wild west world of photos <laughs> on my phone. And uh, the photos on my phone is, uh, is where things live. And it's really bad. So if people have tips, I would love. As an artist, I... One of my disorganized traits is that um, uh, I, I struggle with all the various different programs I need to keep things like together and photos is a big way. But what I've done here is what you can see what I'm doing. I'm going through and I'm creating a little folder from my photos onto my download section on my laptop of the um, photos of the amazing packages and letters and gifts that people sent each other for Love month this year. So um, February is a magical time to connect people. And it was really great for me to get the chance to um, get to see people's gifts to each other and that they saved these. Um, they took photos and sent them to me. It meant a lot to me. It meant that I could kind of like, you know, be, feel that, feel that compersion, that excitement over other people's connections that they were making. Um, it, it's just wonderful. I mean, truly, how does everyone keep track of their photos? What's everybody, I really feel like this is a big, for a while I used this thing called Smug Mug and now I still pay for it, but I'm told that it's like not good and I should be paying for, what is it, Google? Is it iPhone? I, I just like do not know where and how the best hosting and the most organized I could possibly be. I'm like, hard drives are out, right? And like online storage is in, I think, seems that way. Now you'll see the Patreon layout, which is um, wonderful. So here I am um, actually inputting all of these images into, um, you know, the Patreon website. And so I, uh, Patreon, I, their, their formatting of things is, I would say, okay. It's not great. It's not like an awesome sort of blogging experience. But here you can see I've got an image of a, a hedgehog male that – my friend Sam sent to my friend Nolan. Sam is in Maryland. Nolan's in Nebraska. They do not know each other. This is the magic of the love month is that they get to kind of communicate and coordinate with each other in this way. And so, yeah, so I've taken that photo of folders, that folder of photos, and I've thrown them all together into um, uh, this blog post so that I can then type after I've um, dropped them in and I talk a little bit and I put a photo and I talk a little bit and I put a photo. And this is a public blog post. So Patreon has a free um, subscription and also it has tiered money spending subscription. And people spending their money on me, I really, 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 really appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for um, helping me pay my rent. Really. Uh, that's what That's what Patreon does for me. It's instrumental to my survival and I'm so grateful and um if you are watching this and you think oh she's very interesting and cool smart person I I definitely recommend that you um uh, subscribe to my patreon you could subscribe at the free tier people on the free tier also got to participate in the love month experience it was really 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 special and spectacular and um I loved I love doing it I love it tiktok live is something that I am committing to this year or at least making an attempt. March is my first actual attempt. I think it's okay. March is only the third month. It's not that bad. But TikTok Live is something that I am actively trying to do. And when I say trying, uh, that's what I mean. I mean, I'm, I am committed. So I will see you for the month of March every Monday at 11 p.m. Pacific and every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific. Now, I will be totally honest and tell you that ele at 11 a.m. Pacific on a Wednesday, I think I had four people there the whole time. I grew one follower, I think, in that hour that I spent on TikTok Live. So um, my feeling is you can't knock something until you've really beta it, beta it, beta it. So I'm betaing the um, through the twice a week, uh, and maybe I'll try to do three times. I don't know. I do not know what I should be giving to TikTok. I want to grow so much, and I'm I feel lost I feel super lost still <laughs> being totally honest but I do it I'm committing to doing it so um so I had an hour-long TikTok live and I got one follower from it um and 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 these are the honest this is just the honest facts okay it's just it's it's just the reality that I'm living in so then we're gonna look at uh this is um ticketing I have a show coming up a show coming up on April 15th 
That is tax day. It's next month. It's an online show. It's a Zoom show. It's called The Tissue Girls. And part of when you're doing a Patreon post is you have to tell people about uh, other things that are going on and let everybody know about, about all of the good things. So regarding all of the good things here, we do have a production. I had put up the ticket sales. Um, this is a show um, guest starring Megan Markham. It's going to be awesome. I'm very, very excited and looking forward to it. Um, so the Tissue Girls, I made that little graphic on the Canva, of course, and Megan Markham actually drew the tissue boxes, which is amazing. So I put it on Well Attended, but now I needed to put it on my Squarespace websites, and it's a, it's a, it's a process. It's an administrative process, and I used to have an administrative assistant who um, did a lot of things for me, but uh, when they quit, I had no time or ability to hire anyone else, and now as it turns out, I'm not making enough money to hire anyone else. I am making uh, less money than I used to as an artist and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, yeah, hard to get into but uh, I think a lot of artists are struggling with the income that they were maybe generating in 2020 and 2021 and things are kind of, we're in a weird fluctuating period and maybe it'll get better or maybe the world is ending. I don't know. I'm lucky that I'm out here anyway but I currently don't feel that I'm generating enough income for an administrative assistant at this point in time, which sucks for me. But again, that's just like a really honest place. So I am the one putting my tickets up online when uh, my tickets go on sale. That's just a fact. But lucky for me, I am uh, not the only one um, working on my projects at all. So uh, I did have a meeting with my producer for the Broken Bone Bathtub documentary, and that would be one Joey Schroeder. Hi, Joey. Hi. <laughs> How are you? You know, it's such a good question. I know. Everybody says it's not the question to ask these days, but I don't care. <laughs> we just we just rewound twenty years, right? Like we're back to the start of my career. Like I don't. This is how we move forward. I don't know what the answer is, right? Nobody does, which is, you know, anyway. So, yeah, so, so, yeah. so essentially, I guess, in, in conclusion, where I'm at now is just, like, taking a bunch of meetings and trying to set stuff up, mess around with calendars, trying to build these events, um, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm, I am telling people I'm not going to start um, doing anything until May, um, it might even be June just because things, you know, I wanted to start scheduling this stuff in November, Joey, but obviously my life had other things going on and I just couldn't do anything yeah. like that. So yes. it's, it's less also, of, like, I also, I know you probably have had everybody say this to you, but like, you know, please take your time to grieve, right? Like you do not need to push, right? Like nobody's going to be mad at you because it was like, well, you said January and oh yeah, you experienced deep traumatic personal loss. And you didn't get going for six months. Right? Oh. Like, and if they are, we don't want to work with them anyway. <laughs> Word. No, it's really just like getting it. It's just like, you know, we. I shot this in 2019. I just, mm -hmm. it's time to do it. And then, um, and I need to, I need to figure out my, I've been wanting to figure out like my career and my, you know, or do, I've been wanting to come up with the next thing. Cause I'm, I've been stagnant and stagnant, not only because of cancer, but because like, stuff I've tried, like a TikTok coach and all that sort of thing. It just it didn't work, yeah. you know? So I'm like, okay, what, you know, what can I do now? Food and health are a big deal to me as an artist, as you can see. I only eat really healthy foods ever. That's the only kind of food that I eat. Um, that's what's most important to me uh, above all and everything is that I just have a very balanced, balanced diet, as you can see. It's, it, it, it matters a lot. Okay. Here I am. Doing more dishes. We've actually set the dish rack back up, which we had taken down just a couple of hours ago. Uh, and this is the real, this is the real tea of the independent artist journey, isn't it? You know, it's like um, the upkeep of the space. And I do believe in that saying, which is like, you know, if I didn't have a deadline, my apartment would never be clean. I mean, I feel this really deeply. That I'm good at cleaning because I'm, uh, I'm an independent artist. You do a lot of thought meditating when you're cleaning, you know? You're like, okay, that was a good meeting with Joey. He agrees with my path. He's proud of the work I'm doing with my film. The work I'm doing with my film, I am just producing um, screenings of it. I'm turning it into a, a road show, and I'm just going to screen it um, independently in people's 
backyards and living rooms and basements and small indie theaters and whatever dwellings I can come up with to make this production experience happen I'm just like that's that's what I'm doing and it's um it's something I get to meditate on when I'm cleaning so here we go so now we are in the space of uh (laughs) yo the social media hustle and I wish I could tell you what I really feel about it because I feel like the potential that I could have on social media is great because I think I'm a pretty good personality I think I'm really good at it I think I um understand how it works I think I I have the right mindset I think I can handle the right visuals here what I'm doing is believe it or not I'm collecting video of my partner and I and our matching outfits on our trip to Paris I got to go to Paris because my partner had a work trip, not because uh, of me or any money that I make or anything that I did. But we wore our matching outfits and I'm I'm collecting these videos so that I can splice together some cute little 15 second things that I can put across all of my platforms. Here on YouTube Shorts, there are many um, videos of my partner and I in our matching couple attire. So um, if you're into that, you can check that out. That's just another aspect of my um, my creative indulgence. And uh, yeah, so I'm working on that and and collecting videos so that I can then edit it and then I get trend reports in my inbox from my former TikTok coach, which is Wave Wild. And uh, you pay for it. It's a service I pay for. It's $15 a month to get trend reports twice a week in your inbox. And I try to acknowledge them. I try to post according to these these reports. Um, Is it changing my life for my career (laughs) is it do do they get views sometimes they get follows sometimes like you know again I I the social media world I mean I'm here on YouTube trying this long form thing because I'm just trying to be experimental I do not know if this is helpful I do not know if this will make a difference for me I want it to and I feel like I'm doing one more go like this is my my year of effort and if it doesn't work out then um I'm just gonna have to I'm just gonna have to accept that because it's very time consuming um so here what am I doing even uh exporting I'm exporting video to my computer so that I can then edit in iMovie and create little quick um, 15 second or 12 second videos that I can then use on all the platforms at once as opposed to editing from my phone. I am an elder millennial. I am 36. I cannot edit from my phone and I do not wish to. That's not something that I want to do. I'm not saying that that younger people than elder millennials want to do it either, by the way. I am not saying that at all. I'm just acknowledging that, you know, um, some of us are more capable than others, it feels like. Um, I, I don't know that anyone's happy with this lifestyle of of that of editing video of ourselves every day I I I I don't I don't know but what I do know is that there's a potential to get your stuff seen and shared and so I'm here and it's as a creator with people who follow me and care about my work It feels like my social media doesn't reflect that in the way that the world marks your success right now, which is a bit of a mind fuck. So, okay. Let's set up the iPad tripod. So the iPad tripod needs to come out because we're going to do some iPad usage um, today. All of the products, all of the tripods. um, But this is cute, actually. What we're doing now is not a work-related thing. We're taking a quick moment to call my dad for his birthday there he is happy birthday to you happy birthday you're facing you're you're, you're facing fascism on the one hand yes or some kind of minimalist democracy. I'm not, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's not, we're, we're not talking about maximalist de- a democratic power with Biden, but we're talking about at least some civilized decency in, within American society. Suddenly it's time to go out into the world. I'm like, oh, frick. 
Today, I need to go to the um, Time LA Art Center. I need to take some tours of their theater spaces. I'm looking at two rooms, the Shirley and the Joyce, I think is what they're called. I'm looking at the Shirley and the Joyce um, in order to produce events there because I need to put up some events. So I'm going to look at the Shirley, um, but it is raining in LA, which is weird. We don't get a lot of rain, but it's going to be raining in LA. Um, And then I'm like, oh no, it's actually really, really raining. Yes. But I am undeterred. I'm going to go out into this world. And the truth is, this will be my first time in L.A. with my bike poncho. And I'm pretty proud of this bike poncho. It's called a clever hood. It's the bomb diggity. It is a really good biking poncho. It is hella rain resistant. It has um, magnetized armholes. The, 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 there are thumb holes underneath the bottom so you can hold the poncho over your bike handles. And um, I really just, your, your handlebars, I mean, I cannot recommend this product enough. I'm really obsessed with it and I've never worn it out into the world yet. So this is my debut and I'm really, um, I, I was kind of like, you know what, um, fuck it, I'm, I'm in the mood to, to do it. So here I am um, just absolutely setting up, getting my boots on and my little biking gloves. And we're just going to go out there into the world because we have stuff to do. We're doing two things. The first thing we're going to do is um, check out this theater. And the second thing we're going to do is go to an XR Guild meetup. And I'll explain that in, in a minute. But first, you know, you can just continue to admire the features of my bike poncho. Um, I was a big cyclist when I lived in New York City. Rode my bike all over the place and I loved it and it was um just a positive part of my life I I I don't know it just is something that felt like when you're commuting getting there when your heart rate is up is way better from physical activity than when your heart rate is up from the stress of the public transit or the stress of driving in traffic or whatever it may be so uh check this out this is so cool my helmet goes on (laughs) my head uh, we love helmets. We believe in helmets. We believe in gloves and bike lights and, and, and there's reflective gear on this poncho. And then the hood, y'all, the hood actually goes up over the helmet. And I, I, we really love to see it. We also really love to see Hollywood in... The rain. Uh, the rain actually was actually not that bad. It was very blessed. So I don't, I'm not going to film myself riding a bike because I don't want to hurt myself or others. But um, we parked at Time LA and I feel very blessed that they actually had a bike rack in the building. Okay, theater people. You get me, theater people. Thank you for understanding who I am. Uh, so yeah, we were able to park. And then you have to take your bike lights off of your bike. And this isn't so much because like bike lights are expensive and you really care about them like passionately. Although, yeah, you'd rather them not be stolen. But also it's like your safety. Like you need those to get home. You need to be seen. So you always have to take your bike lights off of your bike and put them in your fanny pack. It's uh, what we do. Now here is the Shirley. Look at her. She's beautiful. And our lovely lights. Any color combination you want. Uh, I'm just briefly turn that on so I can Yeah. Okay. House lights. Uh, yeah. Let me get the projector screen and show you what it looks like. Sure, if, if it's not too much trouble, thank you. Surround sound system also, you know, hooks in obviously to the computer or your phone or whatever. You whatever you play out of, yeah. great. Bluetooth for that. Yeah. And you want me to pull the screen, the, the black over so you can see even more. So really wonderful old pictures of this corner exactly. Oh really? Look like yeah. Okay. But I have a client in Joyce, so I can't show you. 
so my awesome host at Time Relay was Pam. Pam's the one who showed me around at the Shirley. Beautiful, wonderful. Um, she's fantastic. But uh, unfortunately, the Joyce got booked. So they give tours to people, to prospective clients. But if a, an actual paying client books the space, then the tour gets canceled. Now, my tour didn't get totally canceled because I could see one of the spaces, but I couldn't see both. Uh, and I'm trying to produce multiple events. So it's a little frustrating. I I feel like I need to go back. I'm such a visual learner. But what do you guys think? The Shirley's really pretty, right? Could be really good for a show. Could be really good. And then uh, I am off back out into the world. Uh, The rain started coming down a little bit again. Here I am um, on Hollywood and Vine just biking through the streets of LA. venue is fabulous. I'm in the elevator of the Aster, which is where this XR social group and the XR guild was meeting. This event was put together by, I think my friend Deirdre entirely, but it's an LA chapter of the XR guild. And XR is a catch-all term. Here's the bathroom. The bathroom is incredible. So we have to, we have to take the content. We have to film ourselves. XR is like an umbrella term for um, augmented reality, mixed reality, and virtual reality. So this is a group of people all gathering together to um, talk about the work that they make and create in those forms. So this is a a subset. Uh, XR exists under the much larger um, genre, I guess, field of immersive experience creators. And as of 2023... I am, in fact, an XR creator in addition to all the other things that I make. So I am, I'm now someone who makes work on, in person, on Zoom, and in virtual reality. So uh, immersive theater is a, quite an expansive um, space for me. Here we all are, all of us XR makers, uh, at this wonderful, charming event of people chatting and getting together to meet. I mean, I met so many cool people that I hadn't actually met before. And so much of the artist job, this is, I guess, like one of the big things of being a creator and a creative is like being around people and networking and shaking the hands is such an important way to (laughs) book work and make money. I cannot stress that. I cannot stress that apart enough. Truly. And now we're home. We rode our bike back uh, through the streets of Hollywood to come home to our home in Hollywood. I mean, stuff that's nearby. We love to see it. We don't have to move the car. We love to see that. Um, so yeah, so the the journey brings us back to the apartment where um, we are going to take some jewelry off and kind of get settled into the evening mode. One of the evening modes I'm trying to pick up is that I start to clean my apartment in the evening as well <laughs> so that I can get more busy at work in the mornings. It's It's that kind of switch off. It's like, okay, let's do some work, more work during the day and more cleaning at night if you can help it. Like when you come home from your thing, can you tidy your shit? That's like my mode. We'll see how well that comes together, but um, this is what I was doing last night as I was coming home and feeling like, oh my God, I actually already felt the fatigue. Excuse me. And when you're already feeling the fatigue, you're like, wait, how am I going to continue to work late into the night? I have so much to do. So you're like, let me move around my body a little bit more um, in the space as I settle into the climate and temperature and vibe of uh, what work I need to get done. And again, this was a to-do list day. So I got a few things on the list done, sending the Patreon, organizing some photo and video, doing some posting, um, putting some tickets on sale, going to look at the venues, meeting the XR creators. Um, This is already like a pretty busy pretty busy day, you know, taking this meeting and getting some things ticked off from the meeting about my movie. Uh, and oh no, is she tired? Is she? Oh no, she's tired. So what's she going to do? She's going to uh, take herself to um, take off the makeup. That's the first thing you do when you're tired is you're like, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to take off the makeup so that I don't even think about sleeping in my makeup because sleeping in my makeup is not, that's not the thing. That's not the way. This is not the way. The way is 
Take off your makeup and brush your teeth as soon as you feel tired and drink water um, while you wrap up your night. And by wrap up my night, I mean I'm actually going to do a toxic trait. This is one of my toxic traits. Um, one of my many, I'm sure there are many, um, this is one I can directly speak to, one of my many toxic traits is uh, bringing the workload into bed with me. Not proud of it. It's just something I do. So um, one of the things I am actually decided to do this night was my nails. Uh, so I keep these um, cotton swabs in my box, uh, in this little pink box, and uh, or these cotton pads or cotton pads. Here's the nail polish remover, and um, I am just going to uh, take off my nail polish. Now, as a high femme creative type, I believe in the concept of nail polish really deeply. Like it's something that speaks to me. <laughs> um, I love all the bits of color I, I can put out into the world. Um, but it's a lot of work. So I was doing gel manicures for a while and those were really bad for me and they destroyed my, uh, my hands. So now I'm doing a um, – I paint my nails myself and I have to redo them like twice a week. I don't really recommend it. Um, I don't know what I would recommend except that like don't do your nails. Like don't get into nail polish. Just stay away from it. But for the time being, it's what I do. And uh, here I am doing it. And um, it's really, uh, you know, part of my process. And I am uh, checking email and Facebook, et cetera, while I do this. So um, – you're kind of like when you do this thing you're kind of like okay what can I do like what things can I read what kind of work can I get done while I'm also doing my nails and this is maybe like not possible because I'm my ADD means that I struggle with I can do multiple things in a day I, I struggle to, to do multiple things at once and that is a, a big challenge here so um yeah we're just putting nail polish remover all we did tonight was take off the nail polish and then put on some cuticle oil. Uh, the painting of the nails, again, that didn't happen until the next day. Um, you know, ritual, I guess. Uh, I don't know that I would call this self-care. I think self-care is like a little dead. I don't think self-care, I think self-love can still exist at the end of the world, but I, I think self-care is a bit of a, a joke and a capitalist lie. But anyway, here I am painting my nails, so... Who knows about that and who knows about me? Honestly, honestly, I'm painting my nails at 11 p.m. on a Wednesday night. That sounds pretty reasonable of an activity, but it's also hard because you're like, how much should I be doing? I should be doing so much. There is so much that I need to get done and I'm so stressed because you can never, you can never get it all done. I mean, look, look at my to-do list. Here's that to-do list on the week of March 5th and I got to do these various things and I only did some of them but I'm all right let's work on giving the number to Sonia um so here me so we can check off some of these things because I did actually get some all right you know what let me give myself some credit I got some stuff done but the task that I assigned myself with before I went to bed was putting together a pitch for a workshop at a university as well as the number that I would charge um I'm not going to say the number because uh, I don't have enough following to sort of really get into that. I don't know. I can – if people, like, comment that they want to know the numbers, I can talk about it. But it's two days of two workshops, so four workshops and a potential performance in virtual reality, teaching um, VR performance and mechanics to theater and dance students at a university. So that is a cool thing that I am going to be working on. And I, uh, I put together the proposal. So the, it's not a proposal. It's more of like a description of the workshop. So the workshop is like, oh, you know, um, students will be left with an understanding of um, physicality and virtual reality, um, the basics of three-point tracking, uh, and an expanded mindset of, um, you know, physical expression in uh, forms of both virtual and uh, physical performance existence okay so uh that made me exhausted and I uh could not get anything else done so I went the fuck to sleep I really appreciate you all joining me here for this um second episode of my long form installments on 
you know, how one lives their lives and, and what a day to day looks like here as a, as a performance artist, um, trying to make things work for herself in the world. Um, I am making okay money right now. I am not making enough money, but it's okay for now because I think that I'm working towards having all the gigs coming and building up, building that up for myself. So I'm in this weird space of like not working on many other people's projects because I'm trying to work on my projects specifically. So there it is. Thank you for joining me. The way this is going to work is every week I'll do a different day of the week. It'll just rotate. So last week was a Tuesday. This was a Wednesday. And next week I will recap my Thursday for you so that you can um, see what that part of my world is like. Uh, Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time and space and energy. And um, good luck out there, artists. And if any questions, let me know. And there will be various links to various things that I talked about in this episode um, in uh, the caption. So see you, uh, see you down there below. I'm like,